Welcome to the Asylum. And now, your hosts, Rick Flieger and Rick Briggs. The weekend is here. Welcome to the Asylum Fantasy Sports Show here on the Full-Time Fantasy Podcast Network. Check out everything over at FullTimeFantasy.com and at FullTimeFantasy on the Twitter. And, of course, you can follow our show at Asylum Football on Twitter. And if you want to be part of Rick's dirty, filthy, old male satchel, you can send those into AsylumFootball at gmail.com. If it was ever go time, brother, it's go time now. Week 12, two weeks left in the regular season. I mean, it's not go time for you. You're all but out. But for the rest of us who are competent fantasy football owners, Rick, we're still in. You have to talk. It's a radio show. You can't just mean mug me. You said that I should come back in a better mood, and then I have to put up with you <laughs> and your oral diarrhea. Are, and, and I just don't think that I should have to do that. Are you implying that uh, you wouldn't do it to me if the situation were reversed? You're correct. I, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. Minnesota, so, the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Cardinals on a week bye. Twelve. That that in, ain't right. No, you know, it's what's not. Goodell doing? That, that just ain't right. No, that, it's that's not. horrible. You know, no Pat Mahomes, no Tyree Kill, no Travis Kelsey, no you, you know, Melvin Gordon, Melvin Austin Gordon, Eckler, S- Austin. Kirk Cousins, Stephon, Stephon Diggs, Diggs, Dalvin Cook. Uh, in Week Twelve, people are trying to get in their fantasy Kyler playoffs. Murray, man. Yeah. What are we doing? I know Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, there is just a plethora of pinatas, of talent out there. A plethora of pinatas, and they're all on by. It's yes. no good. No bueno. No bueno as we go back to last week. All right, Rick. Well, let's get right into it because I'm ready to go out and get hammered. It is Friday night by as as we talk here. So I know it does, can't help yourself, Rick, but help the, uh, help the Asylumites out there. Who are you starting this week? No, I can help myself because I am still alive. Jeff Driscoll versus Washington Ooh. is my quarterback start of the week. If you That's happen to be bold. a Kirk Cousins owner or – uh, you know, Pat Mahomes, certainly not Phil Rivers, because I think probably a janitor can do better than him anymore. <laughs> You're still angry at uh, yeah. your boy Phil. Up but I, I, I think uh, you could do a lot worse. That that Washington defense is not very good. No, they, and, they um Yeah, Dr- Driscoll's been acquitting himself fairly decently. That's a damning him with fan pra- faint praise. You have, you have acquitted yourself fairly decently. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, that is like a start. It's not like we're going to sit here. Well, I'd you, start you, Lamar Jackson. You this probably week if should it were me. start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Russell Wilson. Somebody out there is going to put that on a web page or yeah. you know, a podcast. Make sure you get Lamar Jackson into your lineup. <laughs> you think? Ooh, okay. Thanks. Okay, running back. I got Tariq Cohen. In PPR formats only. Okay. Um, you know, look, that's that Chicago offense is stagnant, but they're finally starting to get him the football, and he scored touchdowns in the last couple of weeks. He does seem to be more involved, yeah. and you wonder why they wouldn't get him more involved. Duh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's not an idiot, Rick. <laughs> right. And instead of a wide receiver, I you know, with, uh, you know, um, Travis Kelsey – you know, maybe you kick Kyle Rudolph that you would have in your lineup. You know, Dallas Goddard. Could yeah. Be a long shot tight end to start. He's um uh you know, Hunter Henry's off too as well. So right. I mean there, there's some talent out there. He's you're he's not gonna get the huge numbers, but he has a touchdown in three out of the last four games. Yeah, so, I mean, Zach you know, Carson owner. Wentz is going to him. Yeah, as a Zach Ertz owner, it's damnably frustrating as Ertz catches eight, nine balls every week, and every time they get inside the 10, it's the Dallas Goddard show. So, yeah, I think if you're in a buy, in a bind dealing right. with bye weeks or it's just so hard to find good tight ends, you know, go to back to that old Bubba Franks model. One yep. catch, one yard, and a tight He comes up more on this show. I have this unhealthy have no obsession idea why. with Bubba Franks. I, know. I can't stop. I don't know why. And he wasn't even there that long, was it? He came <laughs> in right after what? Chamura, I believe. He was very early on when I played fantasy. And even back Maybe then, he was before Chamura. I don't even remember. I think he was after, okay. but I wouldn't swear to it. Even back then, I was always late with my quarterbacks and tight ends, and that's a philosophy I've stuck with for 20-ish years now. And some reason, that's where I always ended up was with Bubba Franks, and you could just write in those six points. There was no PPR back then. He didn't get any yardage. It was for right. one yard. It felt like every week he scored a touchdown. You know, I remember one one year, it was 
doing the same thing that you did. I picked up late in the draft. It was it was their Super Bowl year. Rich Gannon, mm. you know, with the Raiders. Oh, that year he just went nuts. And like the next to the last pick, I picked up Ricky Dudley. I don't know if you even oh, remember I, him. I remember Tight Ricky end. Dudley. He had like ten or eleven touchdowns. Yeah. It was like wow, this is great. <laughs> I made it to the Super Bowl. You well, know, everybody who had Rich Gannon that year went to the Super yeah. Bowl because he was a complete afterthought and just he went all Pat Mahomes on everybody yep. before Pat Mahomes was born. Probably. Yeah, exactly. He was not known as nothing more than a, a journeyman at that right. time. Yeah, and, yeah, just exactly. out of nowhere went nuts. All right, Rick. For me at quarterback, I'm going to go easy with the matchup, but but a guy you know we've a lot of times said he's cuttable, droppable, certainly sitable. But Baker Baker Mayfield this week, I think, has a pretty decent chance to get it together going up against the Dolphins as they feel a little bit of life after that insanity that went on last week. So I like Baker Mayfield this week. Rick at running back, I love the matchup. I didn't like his, uh, you know, his opportunities as much as I'd like to see, but I think he's earned some more. I love Darius Geis this week, Rick, against the Lions. I think certainly a good flex play, if not an RB two play. They're getting trying to get him involved in the passing game a little bit. I think he earns more and more carries with the Dwayne Haskins start. I think they try and see what they have in these young guys now, as even those idiots accept that the, their season <laughs> is over. And at wide receiver, just by attrition, Rick, I don't think it's going to be big numbers, but just through attrition, I think James Washington going up against the Bengals this week is going to be a nice play. You would think, Because yeah. everybody else is concussed, knees are wrapped, they're bleeding out their ears, everything else going on after that massacre in Cleveland. James Washington's the last man standing. I think against Cincinnati they're going to complete a few passes, and uh, I would think James Washington would be the beneficiary thereof. I said, how oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty I, smart, I like right? That. that was, that <laughs> was good. Smart. I, that's good. All right, you want to do your sits? Or? All right, I'll go okay. first. All right. For me, again, it's going to be hard this week when you got Kirk Cousins on by, you got Kyler Murray. I just wonder if Josh Allen, he, he's put up some big numbers the last several weeks, especially in the touchdown realm. I'm still foolish enough to buy into this Broncos defense. I, I'm thinking I just got a vibe on this one. You're obviously going to start Josh Allen, but I think it could be a little tougher sledding from him. After I gave myself the stinky sock for it last night, Rick, um, this might just be sour grapes, but Ronald Jones versus the Falcons. Since Dan Quinn took over the play calling for that defense, all of a sudden the Falcons are playing real good defense yeah. and begs the question, why didn't you do that from day one, stupid? But I think Ronald Jones, you see Peyton Barber sniping all the red zone work, you know, all the goal line work. That makes me nervous. So I, I'm back to uh, – sounds stupid to say sit Ronald Jones, but after last week when I said start him everywhere for the rest of the year and he's going to win you your championship, I'm going to maybe back off of that one a little bit. And, Rick, Michael Gallup against the Patriots this week. I uh, it's the Patriots. They're they're going to take something away. I, I I wonder if the Cowboys are going to struggle in that one. And Gallup in that situation, I uh, I don't I don't love Amari Cooper. I think still gets his, but I think Gallup can be taken away. Okay, uh, my sit at quarterback, uh, Kyle Allen. They're starting to bleed a little bit in Carolina. I don't like that matchup against the Saints and. Um, you know, teams are really starting to disrupt him a lot, you know, and if not for McCaffrey, they've got nothing going on. No. And How about they, Christian McCaffrey in a loss, in a blowout loss where they score three points, still puts up 195 scrimmage yards. I mean, it's just otherworldly what this kid's doing. This it year. truly is. Uh, my running back sit, you know, th- this may seem awful considering the number of good backs are on a bye. But Indianapolis is seventh in giving up fantasy points to running backs. You know, you may have to start Carlos Hyde, but I would really temper your expectations. Um, I just don't know how much they're going to be able to get the run game going. And wide receiver against that that Steeler defense, I think Tyler Boyd, you know, you got Ryan. He just disappeared. Yeah, and plus you have, you know, Ryan Finley. It's not something that I'm – looking forward to as, as far as a good matchup. But look, I mean, you know, Boyd has been decent, but, I mean, if you go back, let's see. I'm just pulling his stats up. He had uh, 122 yards in week two against the Niners, which, you know, that's amazing. Well, yeah. 68 against Buffalo, 
33 the first time against Pittsburgh in that blowout loss, 123 against the Cardinals. Then he goes 10 against Baltimore, 55 against Jacksonville, um, 65 against the Rams, and 62 against Baltimore, and zero against Oakland. Uh, just, they didn't even really look his way. Actually, Tyler Boyd came out and said as much. Well, yeah, well, he caught one of three targets for zero yards, right. you know, against the Raiders. So, I mean, that was, you know, that was just bad. And they're going against Pittsburgh. I'm not saying bench him the rest of the year. They got the Jets coming up. They got Cleveland coming up. They're probably going to have some opportunities, but I don't like him this week. All right, well, let's get into it, Rick. Get that bookie on the phone. We're going to make our picks for the week. Uh, of course, again, Cardinals, Chiefs, Chargers, and Vikings on a bye. Let's start with what is easily the game of the week, Rick, as the Steelers practice squad heads into Cincinnati, giving the, ben- giving the Bengals six and a half. And last week, I have to say, I uh, oh. hate to break it to you guys, but I just broke even last week. I was seven and seven. Uh, I apologize. I've been tearing it up as of late. And uh, Mr. No, Flager won up. some money. He was 8-6 and six for you. Um, that was the first time that I was 500. I have not been below 500 since week four. You're a lot like Mike Tomlin. You're just right at 500 every year enough not to be fired. No, that, you, you missed the whole comment. You, you just don't have a clue. I'm just stomping you this year. You're stomping me? What are our season stats? Well, let's see. Just about how many games clear of me are you? Well, let's With see. With that fuzzy we, we Rick Briggs one. math. Okay, now I am up one. We are even. You are up one. In. You are up one against the line, and I'm going to have to come up with the numbers um, back three weeks ago. You were 64, 55, and 1, and I was 63, 56, and 1, so we're still one apart. We're so so apart. how is this you stomping me? Oh, just because I It is that like fuzzy it. Rick Briggs math again. And, boy, I'll tell you what, straight up, we were even at that time. Let's see, I'm 2 up, 4 up, 2 up. So I'm 2 up straight. One down in the, against the line but, to you. But, but, I tell you, that's stomping you. One but, game but in, difference. In your <laughs> world, that is stomping me. Why not? Even in a case where you're behind, actually, that is a stomping. I, I, I like only that. on the line against straight up. Oh, I'm only winning, where it so matters with, with people's it. money. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. As I said, Rick, the Steelers practice squad given six and a half to the Bengals in Cincinnati. Yeah, and you know what? Doing like a little comparison of like Cincinnati and Miami. Cincinnati looks like they just want to go home. Yeah, they quit. They <laughs> Miami quit. looks like they want to win a game. Right. Uh, I'm going Pittsburgh, 33, Cincinnati, 20. I, I think, oh, so you're going to lay that six and a I'm half. I'm going to lay that six and a half. I think they maybe get a defensive touchdown. Yeah, I think the, the Steelers win this game, even with that mash unit they're going to be put out there, for the same reason you said, right? The Bengals have just flat quit. They just want it over. Everybody in that organization just wants it over. There is no way that Steelers offense is six and a half points better than everybody. I'm not confident they'll score six and a half points, to be honest with you. But the defense with a rookie quarterback is going to make it rough there. So I'm going to take a Steelers win, but I'm going to have the Bengals cover. I think this one's going to suck. I got That's it. That's bold. I got that it. Bold. I got it at 13-10, and you can't tell me you'd be surprised if that game ended at 13-10. Stunned. I would be stunned. Really? No. It doesn't take much to stun you. <laughs> All right, to, to normal real football, Rick, hopefully entertaining football, is the Buccaneers getting four and a half at the suddenly resurgent Falcons. Yeah, and after watching what the Atlanta defense has done the last two weeks, I'm, I'm – Almost wanting to backtrack on my score, but you know we talk about Jameis Winston. He, he he's, he's going to throw the for points up there, guaranteed. Yeah. Hey, look, it, this is a division game. It doesn't mean a whole lot, but it probably means a seller. I'm going Atlanta thirty, Tampa Bay twenty eight. So I'm going to have Atlanta win, but Tampa cover. Ooh, okay. I'm surprised you did that. I maybe that shouldn't be an upset. The Falcons look so bad. I can't convince myself here. Falcons were on that roll or have been on that roll. I feel like 
if anybody's going to undo it, it's going to be somebody like Tampa Bay, who you wouldn't expect, somebody like Jameis Winston, who in an awful performance will still put up 400. I don't know if I get to call this an upset, Rick, but I guess based on the line it is, I'm going to take the Bucks here outright to win this thing 31-30. to 30. All right. So only three turnovers – Three wild turnovers. So we're for only James different Winston by Tampa kicking one extra field goal. Yeah, well, that's, that's what, what yeah. it usually comes down to. All right, Rick, the Broncos, after a great first half, a horrible second half last week, getting four as they head to Buffalo. Yeah, and, you know, there's something to be said about uh, that defense. I mean, they played well. They oh, just, absolutely. the offense is terrible. Well, yeah. And, you know, I think they're going to struggle against Buffalo to score points. They're in Buffalo. I like Buffalo better. I'm going Buffalo 19, Denver 16. So I'm going to have Buffalo win. I believe that's a Denver cover. Yeah, you got a Denver cover. I, I think the Bills, with that defense, they're just going to shut the Broncos down. I think they can find a touchdown somewhere to be better. So I'm going to take the Bills here 23-16. So that'll be a Bills winning cover. All right, Rick, the Dolphins still getting big numbers week in and week out. This week they get 10.5 in your second home of Cleveland. Yeah, and after that debacle last week, the the, <laughs> the clubbing of Mason <laughs> Rudolph, the head hunting by the Browns, the, the kicking and clawing and concussions on the Steelers, yeah, Cleveland seems to find a little bit of grit, haven't they? And they're yeah. coming up with all kinds of scenarios how they're going to make the playoffs. So they certainly haven't quit. Miami, we just talked about it a couple minutes ago, they really haven't quit. Look, Cleveland's a better team. I'm going Cleveland 37, Miami 28. But with that point, I'm going Cleveland to win, Miami to cover. Yeah, we're going to find out real quick after one week in this game what all that nonsense did for the Cleveland Browns I'm leaning towards it with you right they're now going to embrace this villain role and this has brought them together as you saw even after they kind of took shots at him in the immediate aftermath of the game now you see the team and Freddie Kitchen circling the wagons around Miles Garrett they seem to be embracing this is who we are we're the bad boys this is what we're going to be I got a feeling, I don't think they make the plays, but I have a feeling they go on a little bit of a run here that this emboldens them. So I'm going to take the Browns here. I'm going to have them cover. I'm going to say 29-17, something stupid like that. Now, they could come out laying egg. Now they're real bad defensively because your best defensive player is suspended for the rest of the year because he actually hit another man on the head with a helmet <laughs> during an NFL football game, which I still, it's just the most surreal thing I've ever seen. But... <laughs> Mason Rudolph right now. I just it feels like these guys are crazy enough that this will embolden them, and I, I think they play better. So I got the Browns winning cover here. Rick the Panthers. I, this line would have been different. I think two or three weeks ago, getting nine and a half in New Orleans. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Um, the Saints. You know, you you can make argument for San Francisco, obviously, or whatever. But I tell you what, I think I think New Orleans Saints are the most complete team, definitely. Yeah, you know, especially in the NFC, no doubt about that. I think I think they're probably the most complete team in the league. Um, I like New Orleans. I'm going 34 24, and so that will give me a Saints win and cover. Yeah, it's just I agree with everything you said about the Saints. I just I can't lay a big number in that division. It's just weird crap happens in that division. Read two weeks ago when they lost outright to the Atlanta Falcons, who were awful. So, obviously, I think the Saints win this game, but in that division, nine and a half is too much. So, give me the Saints here, 26 to 20, which would be a Saints win, but the Panthers cover this thing. All right. All right, Rick, the Raiders only laying three on, on a little bit of a heater here at the Jets. Yeah, and, you know, coming all the way across from the West Coast, we talked about Oakland. I like what they're doing. Um, the Jets seem to find themselves a little bit last week. Um, look, I think Oakland wins this game, but I, th- I think the Jets cover. I'm going Oakland 23, Jets 21. Okay. yeah, I am fully in on the Raiders now. I'm excited. I, think I hate the, that cross country flight. Yeah, east, you know, west to east, especially. I think the league's better when the Raiders are good. 
I think Chucky's found something here. I, it sounds stupid, just a vibe. I'm going to lay this. I'm going to take the Raiders 27-21. I, I, I'm going to lay it. Certainly wouldn't shock me, that's for sure. Right, I think this is the most surprising line of the day, and it might have a lot to do with that coast-to-coast thing you're talking about, is the Seahawks actually getting a point and a half heading to Philadelphia. Give me Seattle. I got Seattle 33, Philadelphia 27. Um, that gives Seattle a win and a cover. Yeah, I, I think if I can get the coming Seattle off Seahawks a bye. coming off a bye, if I can get points with them and it's not against New Orleans, San Francisco, right. or New England, I'm going to take it. So, yeah, I have the Seahawks 24-23 with an outright win. All right, Rick, the Lions laying three and a half. Three and a half point favorites with Jeff Driscoll in Washington, which tells you all you need to know about Washington this year. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm not high in Detroit, that's for sure. Jeff Driscoll was laying over a field goal on the road in 2019 National Football League. And I have the Detroit Lions 26 to Washington Redskins 16, so that gives me a, a Lions <laughs> win and cover. I got 27-17, so we're clearly <laughs> of the same mind on that one. All right, Rick, the Jaguars catching three heading to Tennessee coming off yeah, the yeah, The AFC South. I mean, I, I'm flipping my, I flip my coin 99 times, and I come up with Tennessee 26, Jacksonville 24. So I'm going to take the Titans to win. And I believe that's a Jag cover, That'd be right? a Jags cover. I actually have the Jaguars here outright, Rick. I think – I don't know. Surprise yeah, me. Yeah, I, I just I, – I don't know. I, I, I just think, you know, Tannehill – had a small bit of a role going where he at least looked like a reasonable NFL quarterback. I wonder if that bye week doesn't hurt him. Jacksonville clearly has to have it. You got a, you know, Minshew Mania is over. You got a professional quarterback starting. I just got a vibe here, so I'm going to take the Jags outright. All right. All right, Rick, the Cowboys with, uh, with your boy Dak Prescott and another, other worldly run right now are getting six and a half points going into Foxborough. Yeah. You know, I, I'd like to pick an upset of the week, you know, be Dallas. If they were playing a big D, yeah. I would. I'm going New England 27, Dallas 23. So that gives me a, a Patriot win, but I'm going a Cowboy cover. Yeah, I, I got it same way, 23-17 New England. I, I just – I'm curious to see what we get out of New England's offense this week, and I'll be curious to see what Belichick takes away. Does he take away Zeke Elliott? Does he take away Amari Cooper? What does he take away, and how does Dallas respond to that? Dallas has been on a heater. They always crash back to earth. I just It sounds crazy saying I don't believe in the Patriots' offense enough to be a full touchdown better than the Dallas Cowboys. So I got them winning, but I got the Cowboys covering. All right, Rick, boy, this one, when the schedule comes, out didn't I didn't necessarily buy into it, but with what the Niners have done, this is a dandy on Sunday night football as the Packers getting three on the road in San Francisco. This is my minor upset of the week. I'm going with Aaron Rodgers uh, going into San Francisco, and I think they pull out an upset 28-27. So yeah. that's obviously a Packer win and cover. Yeah, I... I guess based on the number, it is an upset. I don't feel like it is. For, strictly from a gambling standpoint, if I can get points almost at any time with Aaron Rodgers, I'm going to hop all over it. I'm going to take them. So I'm going to take the Packers here outright as well, 27-24. to 24. And Monday night football. Hey, before we get to Monday night, I believe – that you uh, skipped the Chicago Bears and New York Giants. Oh, I, I believe I did. For, put them out of my mind. So let me, I'm going to have to look up the line there, Rick. So why don't you break down the game while I look for that? Well, we, look, we've got, we've gone into the Matt Nagy, um, Mitch Trubisky, just how awful this offense is. I went through the numbers, um, how bad they are. Look, they've got a great defense. I think they win the game, but you know, you can only do so much without scoring points you can't rely on your defense forever they're lucky they're playing the Giants I think um Saquon Barkley I look for a bit of a bounce back for him he's been rather quiet I believe it was like I don't even know what it was a couple weeks ago before the bye 13 rushes for one yard or whatever it was I mean that was ridiculous but I am going Chicago 26 the New York football Giants 20 you can't have that. That will be a push. It's the Giants getting six. Oh, you're kidding me. Nah. Six right on the button, mm-hmm. huh? 
Okay, well, I am going. I tell you what, I'm going uh, Chicago 26, New York 21. So I will take a giant cover. I don't hate the Giants offensively. You reportedly have Shepard coming back, Golden Tate's rolling. Evan Ingram's got a chance to come back. Danny Dimes getting it done. That's a really good defense. But, again, that offense puts them in such bad positions. I'm doing this on the fly here with no preparation because I botched it and didn't pick that game up when I was putting it together. I'm going to take the Giants outright here, Rick. I think the Bears have just folded it up. It's over. I'm going to take the Giants and your boy Danny Dimes here 24 to 21. All right. And now Monday Night Football is the whole world gets to see finally Lamar Jackson take the show on the road laying three at the Rams. The Rams have a lot of problems (laughs) on offense. Um, Not the least of which is the inability to play offense. They're kind of you, you wouldn't have thought it but they're very similar to Chicago right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they've got a great defense, and the offense just isn't getting it done, although it's nothing like Chicago's debacle on offense. But, look, I don't think they can stop Lamar. I don't think they, they, they can stop that Baltimore offense. And Baltimore's defense is pretty doggone good. I'm going Baltimore 31, Rams 23. Yeah, we're pretty similar on that one as well. I, I think they win it. Fairly easily, at least what can be considered considered easy in the NFL is I got the Ravens here thirty to twenty. Lamar's playing too well, and that Rams offense is playing too poorly for me to see it any other way. All right, Rick, get that old satchel out. Got mail. Asylumfootball at gmail dot com. If you want to be part of Rick's mail satchel. This will probably be the last really heavy one since this, I believe this is the last bye week finally. Yeah, that's um, true. But anyway, it's pretty, hang on. Ooh. Oh, geez, knocking stuff over. <laughs> it never gets old. It's so corny, but it never gets old. I, I don't even know what's so corny about it. You make me carry this thing around <laughs> because I can't use my stick drive. No just, flash drives. It bothers me. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay. Stu writes, Stu. Guys, am I crazy to start? <laughs> Here we go. Josh Allen over Dak Prescott this week. Ooh, okay. He, he was, uh, I kind of chuckled when I, when I didn't say Josh Allen because. No, I was sitting you were, him. Yeah, you were sitting him. But I'll tell you what, you're, I don't think you are crazy. You're not crazy. However, I wouldn't do it. It's. Just not every day you get to start a quarterback on that kind of a heater. Look, is he going to put up four bills on the hoodie? No. But, boy, I, I don't have the guts to do it, Rick. I, I, I just flat don't. The matchup's better for Allen. Everything sets up better for Allen. He's at home. I don't have the stones to do it. Prescott's just too hot right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just to answer, Stu, yes, you would be crazy because Dak Prescott is the third leading Fantasy scoring quarterback. Right. Yeah, he's your stud. This is Pat Mahomes you wouldn't be asking this question. Right. Exactly. And he could easily be in that position had he not missed games. You got it. Okay. Basil writes. Basil? Basil, I don't know. Basil? It's spelled like the spice basil, but I remember the show Faulty Towers with John Cleese from Monty Python. He was Basil Faulty. He ran Maybe this is him. I don't think I've never heard that fictional, name before. The fictional character is English, Basil. So I don't, you know. Anyway, Basil writes PPR. I have um, Keenan Allen, Christian McCaffrey, and Kenyon Drake on buys. <laughs> I need a flex. Adrian Peterson or Tony Pollard? Uh, yeah, be Peterson, right? Yeah, I, I mean, think Pollard Geist, can be lightning a bottle like last week. He's got to score. Yeah, he's got to have that big play. I think Geist takes a lot of work away. That's there's still going to be more opportunity for Peterson. So, I think yeah, so. That's it, a that's a bad spot to be in. Yeah, but, I hope yeah. you're in first place and not chasing points because I tell well, you that what, list of guys on by he may well be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's a nice little team. All right, Larry writes, pick two. In a half point PPR, I need a wide receiver and a flex. All okay, right. James Washington, Latavius Murray, Terry McLaurin, 
Peyton Barber, D.D. Westbrook. Oh, my. Talk about a stack of mediocrity there. D.D. Westbrook. So I have to have a wide receiver. Unfortunately, I think the best on that list is James Washington. He's my start this week at the receiver. Just based on opportunity and then for a flex, although things are bad, I, I think I'm – Washington and McLaurin here, Rick. As much as I don't like McLaurin in that offense. I think offense, I would be, too. It's between him and Barber, but Barber and Jones are could too it much be the of a Jones toss week yeah, now? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, Latavius Murray, look, he's a real hit or miss because Kamara's healthy. He doesn't fill that Ingram role the way right. Ingram did. He, he fills it in as much as when Kamara's out. He puts up Kamara-like numbers, right. but he doesn't take much work from Kamara on a week-to-week like Ingram did. Exactly. And Westbrook is intriguing now that Foles back, but we don't know what we're going to be getting from yeah. Foles, I don't think. So I think you have to wait and see with, with D.D. Westbrook. Monty writes... PPR, Tevin Coleman or Miles Sanders? Hmm. Tell you what, neither one of them has been that impressive. I really expected a lot more from Tevin Coleman this year. Um, Save for that 1-4 touchdown game, he's really been rather mediocre all year. Miles Sanders is certainly in for a lot bigger volume now that um, Jordan Howard is kind of banged up. And Ajayi may get some of it, but I got to go Miles Sanders. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm going to as well. This being a PPR uh, is what sways that for me. I think you're going to have to try and keep up with Russell Wilson. You know, I know their defense is playing better, but Russell Wilson's going to get her his. I think this could be a fairly decent PPR day for Miles Sanders. I agree. All right, Cindy writes. Detroit defense versus Washington or Carolina versus New Orleans? That's not even a question. It's, it's be Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Haskins will have two turnovers minimum. I <laughs> yeah. mean, there's just no Wait, doubt When you it. saw that poor man pleading with his offensive line. And them not even looking up? I've he, never seen such a thing no. before. I, look, I mean, one thing I can say about um, – the Pittsburgh Steelers, as bad as Mason Rudolph was, the, you know, that team ha- had each other's yeah, back. Marquise Pouncey was willing to kick somebody in the <laughs> head. Yeah, nobody's ever <laughs> kicked anybody in the head for me before. No. But, yeah, that that was stunning video. It almost felt like a parody. Is Please, what do I need to do? Yeah. Which is, you know, very uh, passive-aggressive saying, you guys need to get your crap together. We all grant that. But no, but completely non-plus. Right. Don't even look up. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that says I mean, all you need to know about that The only thing that would have made team. it worse is if somebody looked up and says, sit down and, and let Kate or, or Case Keenum play. I don't somebody know. Somebody gets up it, and... <laughs> hits him in the head with his helmet, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pings him in the nugget Miles Garrett style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Sheriff just comes with it. I, I'd be all right. <laughs> okay, blow it up, baby. All right. We're probably about reaching uh, trade deadlines here this week, well, aren't this we? this is from Ruben, and he says, last chance deal. All righty. PPR. I get Mark Ingram and Josh Allen. I like it. For Keenan Allen and Derek Carr. My running backs are Gurley. <laughs> I can see why he's considering this. Gurley, David Johnson, Royce Freeman, and Gio Bernard. My wide receivers are Keenan Allen, of course, Allen Robinson, Michael Gallup, John Brown, and Kenny Stills. Yeah, you don't Keenan Allen. You're gonna have a hard time starting them. This take that now and smash that accept yeah, button. Smash exactly. it. Take it. You got Mark Ingram. Josh Allen's not gonna hurt you. You're giving up Derek Carr. So what? Yeah, I mean uh, that's a no brainer. Absolutely. You got it. Okay. Now, this is an interesting name. Case writes. Case like Case. Keenum. Maybe it's Case Keenum. Yeah, maybe. Well, he isn't. He's got time man. on his hands now. He's That's watching Dwayne point. Haskins get murdered yeah. for a change. <laughs> he's probably thanking God he's yeah. not out in the field. So he's there yeah. setting his lineup. Right, and he has cousins on a bye. Yeah. Mason Rudolph or Derek Carr. Derek Carr. 
I know he's playing Cincinnati. Mason Rudolph is awful, and he has no wide receivers. It's Derek Carr. Don't even think twice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God, this show's stupid. Steve writes, Okay, I'm not crazy about Dak's matchup. Yeah, well, should thought... I start him or Jacoby Brissett? Well, that game was yesterday, so I hope you answered that game. I said Dak. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. And see, I, I don't know. I, I put these down because, yeah, well we, well, we answered who was that, Stu or one of those guys. I forget. The name, it was the very uh, first one, whoever. Yeah, I think yeah, it was Stu. Yeah, it was Stu. I mean, it's the third leading. Right. See that? That's the thing. It's look. Quite, it's not going to be what it was last week. I grant you that. But how bad could it be? But the guys it, but, playing out of his mind. But it's kind of like these guys get. And I'm not saying like just the listeners, but I mean we do it. We do it too. You have this thing in your head like. Um, Tom Brady is is a must start no matter what. Right. Well, he's not. Yeah, and and Dak Prescott is mediocre. Well, he's 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 not. I mean, you have to pay attention. It's it's you can't. You have to get rid of stereotypes. Uh, Kirk Cousins is another great example. Right. I mean, if you don't just throw him in, you know, automatically, you're really you may have Patrick Mahomes on your on your roster too. I don't know, but. I don't know, but he's I, always a must start. I'm trying to get at something to illustrate that point. You might have it up there already. Okay, let me. Who's the number three fantasy wide receiver as we speak? Okay, I am going to pull it up right now. This is PPR format. It is Chris Godwin. Would you ever ask a question that says, "Should I sit down, Chris Godwin?" No. How about the running back? It is, and I would not. I would not ask about Austin Eckler either. Okay. Austin Eckler still the number three PPR running back. Yes, he is. Wow, he is four points ahead of fourth, who is Aaron Jones. Aaron, yeah, that that actually doesn't surprise. Now that you say it, it doesn't pop right to your mind, but exactly. But that's the point. Look, it is a rough matchup, but he's the number three fantasy quarterback in a league that includes Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. Go on and on. He's number three. You might have to temper your expectations a little bit, but don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. I agree. I mean, it, it's – look, when you have – and it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can look at uh, tight ends. Um, Mark Andrews is number three tight end scoring. You're not thinking about starting him. No. He's just – boom, he's automatic. And, and – you know, you just don't question that kind of You're just production. not used to Dak Prescott being that guy. That's where it comes from. Right. The number, it's week 12. The numbers are what they are at this point. It, it's just simple. Yeah, that. you're not asking about, okay, Derek Carr or Mason Rudolph. I mean, you're asking about Dak Prescott. All right? Okay. <laughs> I, I knew you'd like this one. Why do you do this? Huh? Because I, I just like to see your reactions. Cool, right? Cool? Cool. He just calls himself cool? Cool. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> cool. But I mean, cool's looking for some advice, man. You know? And this, this is kind of an interesting question. And I don't know. It, it, it's tough. I'm just going to... Right out to you. Devontae Parker or Tyler Boyd? Parker. I trust Devontae Parker more. Right I do now. too. I really do. And Tyler Boyd at the beginning of the year was top 15. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a, a prospect. But again, it's the numbers. I mean, if this was six weeks ago, well, you know, Tyler Boyd yeah. would be coming back, blah, 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 blah. No, I mean, it's Devontae Parker. I mean, don't even think about it. I, I've been starting Devontae Parker. Every week for about six weeks now in the Scott Fishbowl. As have I. And I he has well, done yeah. marvelous. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I, I could have been persuaded. When I was sitting down to do my start sits, before I looked at any numbers, before I did everything, I kind of do everything from gut first and then make sure the numbers, I can at least be twisted to back up my gut, to be honest with you. 
I was inclined to to talk about Tyler Boyd as a start this week because of the fact he kind of for the first time in his career spouted off about but God they didn't even look at me last week you know he said that in the media and I think yeah with a young quarterback that that kind of stuff resonates you know you saw what it did for Kirk Cousins. But here's the problem: Ryan Finley and Kirk Cousins, right? Right. And you look at that matchup. I think Ryan Finley's going to be staring up at the lights of Paul Brown Stadium most of the day. So that really hurts Tyler Boyd. Auden Tate coming off that scary injury. He's going to be. A, there's right. nobody on the outside that the Steelers are going to be fearful of. So it's Tyler Boyd and Joe Mixon they're trying to take away. They're not normally good against the slot. It doesn't matter. They can focus all their attention on those two guys. Exactly. That's a bad situation. So for this week, especially. Especially if he had spouted off like that and they were playing Miami. I Oh, my God, Tyler Boyd, he's a top right. eight guy this week. Just with matchup, with everything going on there, Boyd just uh, – and, you know, Fitzmagic is doing Fitzmagic things. They're, they're losing games, but he's flinging it around and he's turning it over and he's making big plays, and that's what Devontae Parker is, is their big play guy. you got to wait for that big play, but it's going to come. <laughs> it's going to come. Yeah, I agree. And, you know – Look, Finley's not Andy Dalton either. No. I mean, no. let's not make any bones about it. I'm looking at um, just fantasy scoring right now. Do you realize that Andy Dalton is um, two points behind Baker Mayfield in fantasy scoring? <laughs> I did not, but that's a fantastic he, <laughs> little he, nugget. <laughs> he's about ten points behind Jared Goff. Wow. I mean, yeah. Wow. I mean, no, has Andy Dalton been fantastic? No, but Ryan Finley is – He's a work in progress. Yeah. He, he's learning as he goes on a miserable team. He has 282 passing yards, one touchdown, two picks. And, oh, by the way, he's scrambled for 69 yards, so he's not being very comfortable back in the pocket All Right. Either. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's Devontae Parker. We're done, man. That it. Thank we God. We are done. All right. Well, good luck this week. I know you need it. Got to have it this week for the playoffs. Rick will continue to answer those questions right up till kickoff at Asylum Football on Twitter or AsylumFootball at gmail.com. And for everything you need to survive the week, head on over to Full Time Fantasy at FullTimeFantasy.com and at Full Time Fantasy. Good luck this weekend. You're going to need it. We'll see you. Take care. <laughs>